I'm going to uh, walk you through five simple Ruby tips. So uh, I'm sure you enjoyed the previous talk, which was super funny and entertaining. But this is going to be a little bit more technical, unfortunately. <laughs> so uh, I'll be going down into some of the fundamental stuff in Ruby, so basic constructs. And hopefully, these uh, tips will be helpful to you uh, in, your, in your work and play. So uh, Ming Ding, I'm a big fan of bare programming. Can you see that? Yeah. So yeah, here we go. So tip number one, um, if you use arrays, and if you ever, yeah, just going to be here. So the method sample in, uh, for the array collection, uh, sorry, the array class, will basically help uh, let you get uh, any one value at random in an array. So if you actually have a list of things, or sorry, an array of things, they just want to generate one number for, or one of the elements for, you can easily do this instead of cycling through and then throwing a random number. So as a very simple example, um, can you see this? So this is super basic, and hopefully this saves you some time. Just like that, and it generates a random number within uh, an, a random entry within the array. And you can also actually pass in a uh, an argument that generates a subarray of items in there. So, I mean, just to set a bit more context into how you can use this, so let's say you have a cookie, a fortune cookie generating thing on your application, or it could be an image generator, anything that you store in an array, and if you just, uh, you can simply use this function to just generate something to display so that it looks a little bit different every time somebody goes to your application. So really fundamental. Just use this instead of generating your own random numbers. All right, this is built in. So that's tip number one. Okay. Tip number two, uh, if you deal with hashes and if you ever come across syntax in an application where you have nested elements in a hash and you actually need to query for something like this and uh, you don't know whether there's an element within that uh, or rather, if you don't know whether there's a key, uh, whether there's a subhash within a hash, and you need to do something like ampersand and stuff like that. So in Ruby 2.3, uh, this has been solved for you uh, using the dig method for the hash uh, class. So essentially, I just walk you through an example here. Essentially, so for example, if this is your uh, param, so this can be anything that comes in from, for example, in your Rails, uh, it can be your entry params. Or if you are reading something from uh, JSON, JSON parse uh, uh, a long JSON string and convert into a hash, and you actually want to extract elements out of it. So this is how you could do it. But if you actually don't know what are the keys in there, you can actually come across, I mean, you actually throw up things like this if uh, certain keys are missing uh, in, in the subhashes. So instead, if you actually use the hash dig method, so undefined dig. Ah, oh. sorry. Here we go. <coughs> undefined method params. It'll show you a new. So instead of throwing an error, it'll just show you a new, and you can kind of catch this. So in a way, it kind of fails safely. And uh, it can also allow you to just query sub elements within the hash. So, in, in this way, uh, you wouldn't have to deal with too many exceptions and you wouldn't have really ugly code where you actually have to kind of like do things like this. Okay, second, number, second tip. All right, uh, third tip would be going into deeper into fundamentals, uh, in innumerable. So this is something that is uh, very, very powerful and built into Ruby itself. And uh, is used in arrays and various kinds of collection. So you probably have already come across something like this. So uh, the select, sorry. The select method will actually take whatever is in the block and return whatever evaluates to true. And uh, within a collection, uh, rather an innumerable, which is in this case uh, just an array of 1 to 10. And whatever it evaluates to true, it will just return the elements in there. So uh, this is basic, and its opposite, of course, is uh, reject. 
right? And it applies to, of course, very complex uh, collections as well. So if you only want to cycle through an innumerable and you just want to return the first element that actually uh, evaluates to true and kind of just get out of that, uh, that loop, so uh, you can actually use the detect method. You do this and save you a lot of time and processing and memory. Uh, because this is kind of uh, it's evaluated as an iterator, you do not need to evaluate whatever comes after that. So if you have an array of size 50, but your element that you want is actually element number 2, you exit much faster and you save quite a lot of memory. So that's the detect method. Uh, you can use this in arrays and many, many kinds of collections. Yep. And uh, another one that I want to share, so that's tip number 3. Tip number 4 is actually still on the innumerable uh, two methods, actually. Uh, instead of just getting um, an item out of uh, each iteration, you can actually use the method each cons to actually get a collection of items. And the difference between these two is that uh, each cons will actually, okay, given the value, given the, uh, the argument three, for example, it basically says take a moving window uh, of size three and move it through the, the innumerable. Okay, so well, actually, the numbers actually, uh, the example actually speaks for itself right here. Okay, so basically, uh, for the first item, it is one and take a size three, so that's one, two, three, and then move it to the next one. So why would you, when would you use this? If your application needs something like a moving window for averaging, uh, this is something that can come in and um, it's done for you. So you can just use this and you don't need to kind of get the item and get the next item and get the next item and uh, do those complex uh, uh, not, not really complex, it's more tedious stuff when this is just built in. Uh, similarly, uh, the method for slice will actually just take out the entire collection uh, and then break it up into uh, non-overlapping parts. So this might be useful for something uh, in your application if you want to have, you have a huge collection of objects, let's say uh, 50 emojis, and you want to break it into uh, groups of five emojis. And this is just a free method that you can just call. Yep, and of course, uh, you can actually apply this to, uh, I mean, each element that is actually iterated through is an array by itself. You can actually use array methods on that. So this just evaluates uh, the square function on each of the items in the array for each iteration. Okay, so the last one that uh, I will share is uh, Yet on okay on the enumerator class. So the difference is that enumerable is a is a module, so it's a collection of methods that you add into any class to add some behavior. Uh, the enumerator itself is a class, so this is something that you can just uh, instantiate. So, for example, um, let's say we have this, right? <coughs> this is pretty standard, uh, pretty standard example, and I just want to calculate the square of, you know all the items in, in a range. La. Okay, but what if you were to try to do this? Okay, please don't do this because uh, your computer wouldn't like it and you need to force uh, exit. Basically, it computes to infinity. Okay, so the enumerator lazy uh, method, uh, the lazy method on the enumerable cl enumerator class basically allows you to generate a, a, a function that actually allows you to lazily evaluate. So it just steps through to the next cycle. Okay, so you can just use the method, like, uh, sorry, you can just set it up like this and pass in a, a block to be evaluated. And then, so this is an object. Lazy range here is an enumerator lazy object. And this is the method, oops. This is the method that you want to evaluate <coughs> on. So the effect is actually like this. So just give me the next value in the range only when I ask for it. So it's lazy evaluation so that you don't have count to infinities and it's only when your application wants to get the next item. In a way this is similar to detect but uh, this is really lazy evaluation and you can your application can exit anytime. So you can use this to calculate any number of uh, infinite series in a lazy manner. So that's it. That's the five random Ruby tips that I have for you today. And yeah, hopefully these are useful for you. And hopefully it's interesting. Yeah.
Yes. Okay, so for array yes. sample, right? Mm. Is there any way to sample with replacement so it can actually pick the same value more than once? Mm. Sample with replacement. You mean in the the one that I showed that one? Yes. Or? As I understand it, mm. if you sample more than one, right, it will actually remove the ones that it has already sampled, so it comes. Yes. Back actually. So if you try sample yeah, yeah, yeah. five now, it will actually just return you three. Yeah. Uh, not that I know of. I think. Um, Unless your array itself already has repeated elements, but that's kind of uh, okay. it's a it's a different it's a different mm -hmm. use case. Not not that I know of. I think it generally it assumes that the main use case for sampling is to actually sample unique values. So I think what happens in the background is it generates a seed and just gets the random index and makes it <coughs> unique and just returns you that value. I think the common use case is expected to be a, a unique value within the array, a unique index within the array. Yeah. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, if any questions, they look for me yeah. after that. Uh, thank you, Minting, for, thank you. for sharing five and then we'll